Hey there, I am Jake J, and this is Field Notes for Play. I've been playing Gary's Mod. I know, I'm a bit late to the party. This game is just so weird, I couldn't not talk about it. I wish I'd found it sooner. But here we are, talking about it almost 12 and a half years after its release. It's fine, let's just do it. My time with this game has been quite focused, specifically on sandbox mode. Other game modes, they look like a lot of fun, but sandbox is always the way for me in any game like this. I have very little interest in anything else. Prop Hunt, Trouble in Terrorist Town, and the rest, they all look like a lot of fun, but maybe another time. One caveat to this critique, I have not played much of the Half-Life games. I know that Gary's Mod carries over several of the mechanics from Half-Life 2. It was originally a Half-Life 2 mod, after all, but I just don't have that experience. I'm more interested in Gary's Mod, honestly. So, I'm just going to pretend that Half-Life 2 is some kind of niche game that no one has played anyway. Is, is that an irresponsible way to approach this? I don't know. Probably. But anyhow, let's get into it. For the uninitiated, Gary's Mod started as a mod... Half-Life 2, as I mentioned before. Surprisingly, it was written by Gary. Gary Newman, to be exact. Uh, it was given a full release in December of 2004, and the game is now maintained by Newman's company, Face Punch Studios. It was published by Valve. Gary's mod is, simply put, a physics toy box full of Valve brand toys. You can have Chell fight Pyro if you like, or you can put them both holding hands on top of a big castle made of dumpsters. The game has very few limits, no objectives, and as many physics-based objects as your computer will let you spawn in. But let's start out with the two tools, the... Mm, the two weapons? The, the two guns, I guess? Uh, yeah, two guns that you'll be using most often when playing Gary's Mod. The physics gun and the gravity gun. The physics gun is best used for placing objects. It's also ideal for moving, rotating, or gently tossing a thing. This gun works quite well, allowing a decent amount of precision when moving things around. I used this quite a bit to build structures, but honestly, it's not ideal for that, given the kinds of add-ons out there that work more accurately and consistently. I tend to use this for ragdoll posing and prop placement, but it is a great tool for manipulating individual objects. It also works fine for moving larger welded objects, though the physics engine tends to be a little loose with welds, which results in some annoying and sometimes funny results. If the physics gun is the preferred of the two for building structures, then the gravity gun is preferable for destroying those structures. My favorite thing to do is to build up a number of objects into a wall, sometimes including NPC ragdolls, and then take another weirder object and shoot it at that wall. I thoroughly enjoyed finding out what would happen when I shot a dumpster at a G-man sitting in a chair. And I also appreciated the results of shooting a bathtub at a wall of bathtubs with various NPCs lounging in them. This is quite fun, in the same way that it was fun smashing my car into things in GTA to find out what would happen to my dead body in the crash. There's something visceral about these activities that makes me very happy indeed. Given these two tools, we've already established that there are at least two competing tones in this sandbox mode. The physics gun lends itself to setting things up, the gravity gun is for knocking things down, and this dissonance reminds me a lot of Rockstar or Bethesda games. That is, if you were to strip them of their narrative and their objectives. In those games, I never really understood the need for physics, but in Gary's Mod, I get it. It's almost like the Source engine was built with Gary's Mod in mind. There is a third tool that you'll use a lot in Gary's Mod. Well, it's probably more accurate to describe it as a multi-tool. It's the tool gun, and it does literally everything else. The spawn menu, and we'll get to that in a minute, has a list of the available tools that you can swap between. The functionality of the tool gun is what changes using this menu, and, and there are a lot of tool gun functions available. Here are the default tools, just really quickly. <sighs> 
For constraints, there's axis, ball socket, elastic, hydraulic, motor, muscle, pulley, rope, slider, weld, pulley, and winch. For construction, there's balloon, button, duplicator, dynamite, emitter, hover ball, lamps, light, no collide, physical properties, remover, and thruster, and wheel. For posing, there's eye poser, face poser, finger poser, and inflator. And for render, there's camera, color, material, paints, and trails. <sighs> These tools produce connectors, special objects, changes in properties, etc. Basically, the functions of the tool gun do everything else you're able to do to play with the Havoc physics engine. Before moving on to the spawn and context menu, I want to explain a few of the issues that I have with the weapons menu system that Gary's Mod uses. The weapon switching menu is a holdover from Half-Life 2. All weapons are assigned to a number key 1 through 6, and under each number key can be stored between one and three weapons. This is great for Half-Life 2, since it means you can access your 18 weapon loadout with very little finger movement. However, in Gary's mod, you still have all those firearms and melee weapons, which you won't always need. In fact, in sandbox mode, I very rarely used any of those weapons. Additionally, the gravity gun and physics gun are located under the number one, and the tool gun is located under the number six. This is kind of an unwieldy move, and considering those three items are likely the three things you'll use most often. To switch between the gravity gun and the tool gun is quite a jump. Besides that, if you use the mouse wheel to cycle through all weapons, you need to cycle through a laundry list of weapons to get to the tool gun. Of course, you can map a last weapon button to your mouse or keyboard to alleviate this problem, so it's only a big issue if you're using more than two weapons on a regular basis. And the mouse wheel problem is really an easy fix. You just cycle backwards to get from one to six, but I almost never remember to do that. The context menu is easy enough to navigate and functions essentially like a computer desktop. Change the player model, and apparently you can right-click on things in-world to bring up a separate option menu. I did not know that until I looked it up while I was writing this, actually. The spawn menu is the thing you'll need to work with the most. The menu is huge, but there's not much you can do about that because, well, there's a lot of stuff you can spawn. It has a search function for objects, which is quite nice, though I wish the search would produce results as you type sort of like Google, but it's an older system, so it's understandable. You have tools and utilities listed in the right-hand pane to adjust the current tool gun functionality, and apparently you can also right-click on objects for options here. Again, I didn't know that. So, how well do all these pieces work together? Not bad. Placing things is simple enough, though when you open the spawn menu, you should be aware of where the reticle is pointed. If you spawn something with your reticle pointed at, say, a far off mountain or building, then the object will spawn on that far off mountain or building. Object placement is somewhat imprecise, so you can't really use it to build things. That really just means that for every object you want to place, you need to spawn it in, then switch to the gravity gun to place it exactly where you want it. The duplicator could probably be used for this purpose, but that tends to be a little unwieldy and imprecise as well. And on that note, now seems as good a time as any to talk about add-ons. The community has developed plenty of them, well over a million, according to the workshop. There are, among other things, rag dolls, player models, spawnable objects, and new tools. Face Punch has included the use of Lua to script, which means that modding in functionality is easily accessible. I think Gary's mod has benefited a lot from the modding community. I've, I've talked before about how the modding community is sometimes exploited by game companies, but I don't think that's the case here. Where the modding community for other games spend a decent amount of time quote unquote fixing the game, it would seem that Gary's mod's modding community is more about extending the possibilities of the game. I don't think it's a controversial thing to say that part of Gary's Mod's charm is its brokenness. Well, actually the brokenness of the Source Engine. And let's talk about that brokenness for a second. Games are broken, all of them, especially big open world games. Source Engine is not an exception here, but there's something particularly honest and hilarious when the Source Engine does something you don't expect. One of my favorite glitches is when you slam a physics-based object down on the ground, causing it to fly off into space when you let it go. I mean, if you run into these things often enough, they do become incredibly annoying. Like when you slam a physics-based object down on the ground, causing it to fly off into space when you let it go. But it's still charming. When I first started playing, I 
grabbed a bunch of pigeon bodies and tried stringing them together with rope. I'm not sure why, and I don't know what happened, but one of those pigeons just started going insane, flopping and twitching all over the place. I had a good laugh at that. Gary's mod doesn't shy away from that kind of stuff. Gary's mod is positioned in a very interesting place. In some ways, it functions as a perfect QA tool for testing the source engine. Finding all of these physics issues with Gary's mod is fun, but also shows how imperfect the engine is. In fact, it's a bit surprising that Valve published this game. I mean, do you think Konami would release a game that showed how buggy their engine was? Do you think EA would release a game where you could take all of their game characters and pose them in a big orgy or toss their bodies around like yesterday's garbage? Not, no, no. Not so much. In fact, I think it's a real testament to Valve that they let Gary's mod exist, which either proves how confident they are in their products or proves that they don't take their games too seriously. And it could be either of those things. And either is admirable. The impressiveness of Gary's mod isn't about its design, but about its capacity. You can do basically anything in Gary's mod, at least as far as video games are concerned. And that's to its credit, of course, but in some ways to the detriment of Source Engine. I'd be curious to know how many engine fixes are directly related to people finding weird stuff going on using Gary's Mod. I imagine that it's not insignificant, and if Gary's Mod has in any way shaped what Source Engine looks like and how well it functions, I imagine that a Gary's Mod sequel, should that ever be released, would benefit greatly from those updates. Gary's Mod is a bold statement about video games, and I wish more game companies would embrace the capacity of this game. Not just for the sake of fan curiosity, but for the sake of the game engine and their assets. I think that Face Punch and Valve have a great symbiotic relationship. Here's hoping that it continues. All right, that'll do it. Thank you for watching. Gary's Mod is an interesting, really, really weird and interesting thing. I uh, hope I get to spend some more time with it. Let me know what you guys think about Gary's Mod in the comments, and I will respond to as many of them as humanly possible. Again, thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like the work that I'm doing, and I will talk to you folks soon. I want to do a funny thing with a pen. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> At least you think I'm funny. Thank you. <laughs>